I missed that. So, uh, so the last webinar we were we were talking about digital farming, and uh, we had a lot of concepts. Uh, what people understand about digital farming, yeah, we would continue on that vein um, today, uh, but on a more expanded note. And uh, today's webinar uh, is actually tailored to actually give you a broad overview of where we are going, you know, where we are going. And so that you as an entity, as a person, as your, uh, as a founder of your startup or the organization uh, group, organization, or yourself, you know, you can be able to have a clear direction um, because when there is no vision, you just be moving around. But we can be able to know if this is actually where the trend is going. And this is what we want to expose to you today in this webinar. So in this webinar, we are actually here to actually talk about a digital revolution, a revolution that is looming. A revolution that is changing how we eat, yes. A revolution that is that will change how we produce our food, you know, uh, 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 as 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 agripreneurs um, engage in the food system. I mean, a revolution that is shaking every part of the food system. This is what we are talking about. This is well. This is what we are talking about today: a digital revolution. So there's a revolution coming uh, that is actually looming. And the advantage of this, the point is that so that you, I repeat, so that you can be prepared, so that you can be positioned. Um, it's it's better to be positioned for 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 what you uh in 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 this revolution than just like seeing it happening or you are just observing, you know. But we want you to actually be a player or at least be an enabler, uh, an enabler of these new technologies. And we do not want to be left behind. And that's the point, because if we are left behind, there's a lot of things that would happen. We will not be able to influence the narrative. We will not be able to uh, deliver on the promise of food security. We will not be able to deliver on better sustainability and livelihood for ourselves, for farmers, and for our ecosystem or country or nation, or even what you are potential for the world at large. Um, all right, so today we're talking about digital revolution, like I mentioned. And uh, before we dig deep into the digital revolution, let's um, say, so what, what do you imagine about the future of work? I want you to actually engage the tag box. Uh, thank you so much for joining. So uh, I want you to engage the tag box um, because I'll be asking you quite a lot of questions. And um, yeah, you could also use the, uh, the mic you know, to comment if you wish, but I want you to do that in an orderly manner uh, by raising up your hand, by using, there's actually an icon there for you to raise up your hand, uh, you know, to, to make your contribution as I allow you to. Now, the question I want to ask you is, what do you imagine about the future of farm? I mean, what, what do we imagine about the future of farm? So I want you to actually uh, engage the chat box or perhaps use the use the microphone if you uh, I mean how do you see the future of farm or, or if the future of farm the future of farm like what what do you think uh, the future farm would be like somebody there I'm actually looking at the chat box uh, David okay mostly indoor hmm, interesting. Interesting, mostly in the, perhaps you're talking about protected area cultivation, um, vertical farming, uh, you know, um, I, and a lot of variables, I mean, um, the, it's variabilities, uh, you know. Yeah, mostly in the, I think so, you know. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Okay, uh, David even said, even for livestock too. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That's, I love your imagination. So guys, I, I want you to engage. Okay, Samuel said, let's impute more yield, safer environment. Hmm, okay. But, but, but I, I don't want you to actually give me uh, the, the, the deliverables or the derivative of what the future farm will look like. I'm actually talking about what, how do you imagine? Like, okay, you visited a farm, perhaps your, your, your dad farm or your home farm, you have cocoa, you have, okay, everything is just there. But in the future, in, in the future farm, 
like imaginary. What do you, okay, now we're talking about eye tech. Now uh, we, we can now use VR glasses, you know, and we are talking about metaverse, you know, that concept, that's what I want, okay? How do you imagine? Yeah, uh, El, uh, Elwin Group, uh, that's Rosalind, mentioned that it's a, a urban farming. Mm, I think that's actually uh, related to um, related to what David mentioned, mostly indoor, uh, in, uh, mostly indoor, perhaps indoor farming. Okay, uh, I'm I'm looking through. Uh, Kai Ode Ezekiel mentioned less laborious. Mm, I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Nobody call like to stop out. So more resilient and sustainable than ever. Okay, yes, that is true. We're coming to that. I but I want you to paint a picture of what the future farm will look like. Oh, guys, I want you to paint a picture. What what will you look like? What technologies are you going to be engaging? What and what are you going to be having on the farm? What setting? Paint a picture. That's what I need. I mean, let's paint a picture. Okay, I believe it will be practically machinery and ICT based. Thank you, David Mano. Okay, so he said he believes that it's going to be practically about machineries and ICT based. I mean, perhaps machineries, mechanical um, uh, machineries, uh, and, you know, just a minute. Please. Okay, so um, some machineries and ICT base. I mean, I, I, I like that. I'm beginning to uh, paint, paint, paint how it's going to look like. Uh, very organized and structured. Hmm. Okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm actually having some setting because, uh, okay, so you, you're organized and structured. That means you're going to have a very clearly how uh, perhaps you can begin to talk about agricultural architecture, right? <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, you know, land planning and, and all that, uh, you know, and also imputing it with machineries and ICT, you know, you actually need an organized system, a structured system to actually do that. I see David also mentioning, okay, RFID chips in crops hmm, and animals to detect stress, growth, and a whole lot of issues that partake in their development. That's actually innovative. I, I think that's, that's one of the things I have to just look forward in the future of farm. I think the how FID chips is just like uh, a sensor, you know, that you can, there is actually a plant sensor now. Uh, there are plant sensors now, uh, you know, and uh, when, I, when I discovered like you are wearing variables, uh, I mean, putting variables on plants to detect sensors, I'm like, where are we going? <laughs> you know, okay, uh, less space used, more production, less human interaction. Hmm, I agree, I agree, I agree. That's Shego Moses. And uh, internet and uh, database farming. Yeah, good. So let's just move back to, uh, the, the screen, what you have here. You know, this 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 picture is actually uh, taken from um, Future uh, by uh, from the platform for Big Data in Agriculture, uh, which is actually now a, a program that has ended uh, for, yeah, it's the program is ended now. I mean, it's, it's a developmental program. So I was actually one of their delegates, um, that was in 2020. And this picture has actually sticked with me, you know, uh, since that time. I mean, about uh, the future of our, how is it going to look like? And they described it like this, you know, uh, they described the future of farm uh, like this, uh, to say uh, the future of farm is one that um, internet, uh, let me see if I can make an annotation. Okay. Can you see my mouse? This is this is satellite, okay? Uh, where satellites would uh, be communicating, would be using satellites, perhaps to monitor as remote sensing to, uh, you know, uh, and uh, there's a tractor on the field which is autonomous. So let's quickly read this. It said Uber Agribots, okay? 
not actually necessarily a tractor, um, but like a robot, okay, a self-propelling or autonomous robot. So peer-to-peer -peer farmer service allowing smallholder farmers access to cost-effective cut, uh, cutting edge technologies such as agribots that tend to or harvest, tend to or harvest crop and provide precise application of fertilizer and water, saving the economy. Saving the uh sorry, let's start. Saving economic and environmental cost, you know. So they mentioned that we uh, a farm that features a feature farm that features a mobile application, um, a, a farm that features you know sensors, uh, a farm that features uh cloud computing or farm to cloud where data from the farm are actually uploaded online, and um, I mean. In the cloud, what you call the cloud. Uh, so I read what is there. So farm generates vast amount of rich and variable data, very varied data, which can now be uh be stored, processed, shared in the cloud, uh, to be delivered back to farm as important advice to services. And most importantly, I mean, don't mind me, I have a sentiment for this this technology, which is actually drones. Uh, so they, they mentioned that. Uh, a future farm we actually have, uh, we, we, we also contain survey drones uh, as a technology, uh, area drone survey, uh, the field to map crop health and yield, surveillability, cloud storage enables faster data movement, analysis, and exchange of exchange, increased computational capacity while decreasing cost. Okay, so I hope with this picture, you are kind of able to uh, relate uh, with what where we are going. And I actually brought this up so that we can, um, I actually brought this up so that we can be able to uh, conceptualize uh, the, the, the idea of the future farm or more importantly, um, digital revolution in agriculture. You will see that all of this talks about digital, uh, a digital, digital technology, interactions of digital technology. And somebody mentioned that less human interaction, you know, uh, we, uh, like I used to say, and I need to emphasize uh, that agri-tech does not mean you're not going to go to the farm. Um, it does not mean that, oh, uh, you, you're not going to touch the soil. Well, I, I mean, it, it makes sense. But what we are saying about agri-tech or the, 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 the goal of agri-tech, more importantly, is for you to actually um, use this technology in uh, to enable precision activity, precision, uh, uh, um, precision agriculture, whatever, more precise, you have clarity. You are not confused about when to plant, how to plant, uh, 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 what you should do next, you know, but you are actually more sure uh, about what to do. And that is actually what agri ag um, agricultural technology, more particularly digital, um, digital technology are actually enabling. So feeding the future bite by bite. So when we talk about digital, we're talking about uh, bytes, you know, we're talking about data, we're talking about all of this. So now, uh, but before we move to the future, I always like to uh, talk about this, um, this part of the topic, uh, which is, uh, yeah, how agriculture has evolved over the years. Uh, because we cannot actually appreciate where we are going if we do not know where we are coming from. So if we understand where we are coming, where we are coming from, we can be able to be aware of what the future holds, or perhaps the importance of not just living in time, but actually living. I mean, living because you know this is actually where we are coming from, and this is where we are now, and this is what we need to do now. Okay, this is why I'm bringing this up. Uh, as how agriculture has evolved over the years. Just like every other industry, I must tell you, there's always an evolution, or perhaps we call it revolution. Evolution means change. Revolution means, uh, we are not talking about revolution now, or this uh, political, we are in a political season, but we're talking about a uh, revolution that changes the status quo. Uh, the revolution that means that uh, we, we were moving in the direction before, and right now, um, there's just a sudden change. There is just a sudden move 
It's just a, um, an unprecedented uh, happening. But these revolutions do not just happen overnight. And that's just a fact. We can call it revolution, they're like, boom, oh, and it just happened. No, they actually happen over the years, step by step. And it's actually happened, not just happens time, it happens because uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, stuffs are, are, are interacting together to actually deliver a revolution, okay? Uh, in systems, okay, different systems interacting, different organs interacting, and um, we can really to deliver a new revolution. So let's talk about the first agricultural revolution. I actually wasn't born at that time, you know, but uh, it is believed that, um, uh, you know, at the beginning of time, men were just gathering food or hunting for animals. And um, and before they had the idea of planting and growing, I mean, adoption of modern agriculture where they can be able to also use animals, use a lot of, um, you know, get seed, replant in the soil, tender it and all that. You know, that's agriculture. Uh, one point zero. So the adoption of modern agriculture and modern agriculture in this context, modern in those days, in the, in the BCs. All right. So uh, people took farming as a job. I mean, tending the soil and the like. Now, fast forward, and this fast forward, I do not know the number of years that it took in the human race to actually get to agriculture uh, two point zero, uh, which is more aimed on mechanization. So in this revolution. It is a revolution that is that 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 is ushered in by steam engine, or what we call uh, steam engine produced gave us tractors, uh, heavy machineries, or even cars. You know, uh, people moved away from using horses, uh, horses, and the likes to now begin to use mechanical systems. You know, and this actually happened after World War One. Wars, you know, women want to survive. So wars can actually bring different uh, technology. But I and I also hope that uh, the the war with Russia and Ukraine uh, would actually bring something good for us. But agriculture for two point zero actually happened after the World War One, and um, I think that was in the early eighteenth century. And if you like to know, some people call this revolution the British Revolution uh, because yeah, you know, at that time, so. Uh, and one thing that you need to actually know about the revolution is that it gave, uh, it opened human race to industrial, or I would say larger cultivation. Yeah, larger cultivation, where people can be able to cultivate on a mass of, of land. And that's because uh, you have taken away drudgery, other human labor or animal, you know, which is limited, you know, to from biological to something more mechanical, which is mechanization. and. Um, Fast forward to agriculture 3.0. So it is a claim to start around uh, after the 1960s or 70s. And um, this is actually called the, the Green Revolution. So the Green Revolution uh, is a revolution that actually brought to us different innovative technologies. One, and uh, one of these technology uh, it's cut across uh, mostly chemical and biological, you know. So from hybrid seeds, I mean, to understanding of genetics, how men were able to breed super, super, super productive varieties. And we, we then have kind of increased in yield, a bumper harvest, you know, in yield. Uh, so talking about uh, the Green Revolution, then we, we had uh, rice, uh, thanks to, um, normal ball long, uh, wheat. I mean, now we can eat bread all around and bread is one of the, perhaps I think is actually the most common food in the world, you know, and that's because we had wheat in excess. We had wheat and this does not just happen. Do you know that seed technology is a technology? So I need to reiterate that. So when we talk about agri-tech, seed technology is part of them. Okay, so we had the seed technology with hybrid seeds, uh, you know, a, a lot of genetic crops. Uh, we also had uh, product uh, increased productivity, and also we also had pesticides. Yes, pesticides, uh, chemical technologies. You know, biochemical or chemical tech, pure chemical uh, uh, technologies uh, that that helps us to protect our crops. You know, um, you know that that was the time we had DDT. 
uh, which is actually faced away now, um, uh, gone to gone. Uh, I mean, sleep, uh, rest in peace, <laughs> less and less, because well, at the advent of DDT, I mean, it did a, a great job, even in human health, I mean, or public health. Uh, but in relation to agriculture, we also discovered that it was also used uh, to protect crops. And um, yeah, what's the essence of actually having an, an IBT that can yield uh, multiple and um, we pests and diseases are actually eating off or causing food loss, but we had pesticide at this time and a lot of other technologies um, even this time. Now to agriculture 4.0. That's the fourth agricultural revolution. So it is also regarded as the digital revolution because this revolution brought to us, or is bringing to us because we are actually just ruling it, I mean, ruling it to it. Uh, it, it, it it's bringing to us more digital solutions, uh, more digital solutions, um, such as, sorry. Okay, more digital solutions uh, such 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 as uh, um, uh, self driven tractor, if you can look here. I mean, and that's 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 actually enabled by Internet of Things, the technology of Internet of Things, satellites, satellite imagery, satellite data, uh, big data. We talked about big data and cloud cloud storage or cloud computing. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, mobile devices. Uh, we had mobile devices or mobile applications, softwares. And guess what? We have just started with softwares. And this is actually where we're going. And um, don't forget that we are actually driving a lot of this so that we can get to a particular point, so that we can be able to relate with where we are going. Okay. So, guys, we stay, stay in touch and enjoy the story for now. <laughs> you know, so we had, we had, uh, we, we now have artificial intelligence. Uh, when we talk about machine learning, computer vision, deep learning, a lot of buzzword and the like, blockchain. And this revolution, I need to say, it's not only about primary production. It cut across the value chain from farm to fork, from soil to stomach. So this is actually what the revolution was talking about. And this revolution, you know, uh, all of the previous revolutions had their disadvantages. You know, uh, we know, uh, just using animals and humans or tools like that to farm, we know the limitations. Uh, it could not actually give, uh, give the population what they wanted or uh, in commensurate measure, agriculture 2.0, you know, now people talk about climate change because steam engine, you need to burn fossil fuel and all that. Um, affecting sustainability, agriculture 3.0, people also talking about seeds. Oh, some people are actually, um, um, uh, uh, um, extorting farmers, uh, uh, seeds, seeds in, in the, in the Northern hemisphere cannot be used in the Southern hemisphere, hemisphere, you know, or whatever, um, tropics, um, ecosystem that you are, ecoclimatic region that you are, you know, all of these acts, yeah, disadvantages. And more particularly pesticide. Oh my God. That is actually the, the good evil that. <laughs> that I think we cannot do without. If you ask me and you, you are hitting today, uh, yeah, and this does not say that we will not do organic. We need to do organic for sustainability. And that is actually where we are evolving to. Now, to agriculture 4.0, it's actually um, a revolution that goes beyond all of this to actually think about sustainability within it. And this is actually what digital technologies are actually delivering to us. You know, um, there is more food with agriculture 4.0, uh, we can be able to solve logistics problem. And this is where I mentioned that agriculture 4.0 cut across the value chain. So across the value chain, wherever you want to actually situate yourself, either as um, a primary producer or a, a primary producers or within logistics, I mean, trying it within the value, um, in logistics within the value chain or trading and a lot more uh, um, um, career that you can actually take. So the agriculture 4.0, that means the fourth agricultural revolution is such that encompasses all of this, um, all of this, uh, uh, this, all of the value chain in agriculture to, uh, to deliver to us uh, social, economic, and, um, and environmental sustainability while we make profit. Yes, while we make profit. So that is actually the goal. Uh, let me see. What next? Now, 
So the question is why agriculture for zero? So I mentioned the other time that when we talk about uh, the, the main reason about agriculture for zero, it's so that we can be able to deliver social, economic, and environmental sustainability. Yes. Uh, we're talking about we have a lot of problems, global problems around climate change, around um, food insecurity, uh, around a lot of uh, problems, you know, uh, gender inequality and all that. And this is actually why we need agriculture 4.0. This is actually why we need digital revolution to bridge the gap, to actually uh, 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 take away uh, inequalities, gender inequalities, uh, Poverty, uh, poverty can also mean not only economically, it can also mean uh, disadvantage, that gap, you know, between, between the resource-rich countries and or the resource-rich region and and the uh, and those who are low, you know, we can be able to bridge gap. And this is why um, digital technologies are doing that. Now, I want to then say what are the potentials and the opportunities in this revolution? In this digital revolution, what are the potentials and opportunities? What potentials do we have, and what opportunities do we stand to gain? I think this will interest you um, as it interests me. So I'm going to talk about the potentials and the opportunities of this new revolution called the um, Agriculture 4.0 or the Fourth Agricultural Revolution. One, um, I want to reveal to you that today. We, I mean, yeah, in these times, we then have, we have high and rapid smartphone and mobile internet communication. Why I'm bringing this to you so that you can be able to uh, know the potential and opportunities that you have in the sense that, so that you can be able to influence, so that you can be able to be part of this revolution, okay? Being part of this revolution is actually why we are here. Uh, being, not just being part of it and being passive, like, oh, uh, we are following but actually uh, being a, an active player, okay? Being an active player. So uh, this is actually a bit, most particularly in Africa, you know, looking at mobile and mobile internet penetration, you know, uh, percent of adults. Um, we can see Nigeria have been, you can see the statistics. It's actually growing. My point is that uh, mobile phone and internet is actually moving. And now we are now talking about internet connectivity around 5G. Uh, trust me, you can see what MTN and the lights are doing with the new 5G. It's penetrating. And guess what? Agriculture is going to benefit much more than, I think much more than any other industry. Or my sentiment is talking there, but I know that agriculture has a lot to benefit from the super hyper connectivity that is brought to about by, um, by the, uh, 5G, I mean, by the internet, by the new revolution of the internet, because that's actually another revolution. Uh, if you understand, uh, if you remember Hedge, I mean, 2.2G, 3G, now we're using 4G, now we're talking about 5G. So, but 5G would actually enable more of internet of things. Yeah, 5G would enable more of internet of things where an autonomous operation, where tractors can be talking with sensors uh, or be talking with drones, uh, without you, uh, without you interacting, you be you just see drone fly at at a particular time when it senses something or a, an information is actually sent to the drone. It takes off by itself without without you going to the field, and you are just in the office or perhaps using your phone just like this and saying um, whatever you call your systems uh, and say go to field field so so and so and scout the field. And when it's count, if you descend the data all to you on your desktop, and you're able to view uh, what is there. So but all of this will be enabled or will be backed on um, the super hyper uh, connectivity of internet. And this is actually an opportunity for you. This is an opportunity for you, I repeat. And these are potentials that we have so that you can be able to know that the revolution is here. So it's not, it's not coming, it's not coming from uh, I mean, it's still not coming like, uh, let's wait for it. Uh, it's coming, let's wait for it. No, uh, this revolution is actually here. And what, these are the vehicles that will enable this revolution. It's not waiting for you. All of this 
it's not actually what you are doing. You are not the one producing the smartphone. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure, but actually, we, we, and you're not the one, the internet providers, but they are actually working and these things are actually happening naturally, but they have a way of influencing and actually driving us towards the new revolution. I will come to how this relates very well as we go ahead. But don't forget, we now have a rapid and high smartphone and mobile uh, internet penetration. Now, I also want to know, you wanted to know that we also have the, this potential, this opportunity, uh, that more than 5 billion people would have access to the internet by the year 2025. The year 2025 is 2023, 2024, maybe three years to come or three years to come between that time. And this is true. Look at the statistics. And this is got in 2019. This statistics was in 2019. So look at people who had internet access 4.388, you know, so billion. So we just needed seven, 700, uh, less than 700 billion uh, to, to get, uh, I mean, to reach, to reach this, which is actually true. Okay. So this is actually happening. Internet, uh, uh, people are going to have more access to the internet. These are actually opportunities for you. You as a player, I want you to actually have all of this at the back of your mind because these things are actually existing without you. And this is actually the vehicle to which agriculture 4.0 is riding on. Okay. And um, what's the next point? Increase in satellite number. Um, as we go, when we talk about remote sensing, uh, we, we cannot... <coughs> So when we talk about remote sensing, um, satellite drones and the lights are actually uh, the technology of, or, or I mean, the technologies that are enabling remote sensing. There are a lot of other technologies, but they are the most common. And every month, new satellite is being launched by various ex observatory um, companies, by industries, no, sorry, by countries. I mean, Zimbabwe, Malawi, I think they just launched theirs recently, you know, into the space. And these things are actually increasing. What's the essence of satellite to monitor? And we need hours. Uh, please, um, thank you. Okay. So we're talking about, uh, talking about satellites, the increasing satellite number. What's, what's actually the opportunity in increasing the number of satellites? We can be able to monitor our farms. You know, we would be able to have um, satellite imagery by Sentinel two. Uh, you would be needing. I mean, it will be coming to the frequency that to which you'll be getting data about your field, about your farm, your crops um, every week. You know, but with increase in satellite, you can be able to have everyday data monitoring the farm real time in terms of what's the health of your crop, what's the um, and pardon me, today is not about technicalities about this uh, this technology, as that is actually what we'll be dealing with in 2023, uh, more specifically on this particular technologies, uh, from artificial intelligence to satellite, uh, satellite imagery and data, uh, drone technology, um, uh, internet of things, uh, data science, and a lot more. So, but I'm just revealing how what are the potentials and opportunities that are enabling agriculture 4.0? And when I mean agriculture 4.0, I mean that digital revolution that we are talking about. So you can be able to have data of your farm on your phone day on, on your smartphone, and you can be able to monitor and you can be able to just control. But one of the technology that, uh, that gives us the leverage on opportunity is actually increase uh, satellite imagery, uh, satellite, uh, satellites, and, um, and that's brought to us by the increase, by their increase into the space. Let's go ahead. Tech is getting smaller. That means technologies are getting smaller, cheaper, and easier to use. And I purposely used um, this newly launched uh, Mavic, or this newly launched drone, forget about the name. And by the way, um, I like one of the things I also want you to know is that in 2023, we, if you can read what is here, this is DJI Agriculture. So this drone was also made by DJI Agriculture. So I had a meeting with them um, this month and um, 
I'm actually wearing this clothes so that you can know that it is actually real. It's actually not an internet interaction. So in 2023, and our vision for Position Feed Academy is to actually be one of DJI's um, agricultural academy. You know, so let's talk about the topic. That's by the way. Tech is getting smaller. Imagine this drone that you are seeing here, Agritech drones. This drone that you are seeing here, you can actually put it in your backpack. And I mean, not big backpack. It's some, it's portable, it's smaller. And guess what is actually doing? Okay, I have a drone here, which is actually portable. This is actually a drone. Okay, look at my size, look at my head. Uh, how do I show it? You can see how this is portable, but there are even more that are portable with, than this. But I think uh, the drone is of this size. Okay, this is actually the DJI uh, Mavic uh, Pro. This is the first version, and it was actually released, if I think, in 2015 or 2017. Uh, I'm not sure what I said is correct, but please check. This is this was the first uh, portable drone made by, uh, I mean, that I know of, okay. You can see how portable it is. Tech is actually getting smaller day by day. And guess what? We now have drones that can rightly fit into your pocket. I guess what? This is my phone, all right? This one on my phone. You can be able to, uh, okay, we now have drones that are even smaller than this. And the fact that they are smaller than this does not mean that they are now professional. They are very, very professional. Check out the Mavic Mini 3 Pro, and rumor says that this particular company is also ready to produce four. I mean, with sophisticated capabilities and, and, and uh, features, that's what I mean, uh, that, it's, that you can be able to get real-time data, quality, high resolution, or ultra high resolution uh, data. You know, so those that you can actually put in your pocket and you are actually good for the work. What does this mean to you? What does this mean to you in the future of work? When we talk about agriculture for point zero, this is all about the future of work. How can we actually get, how can we position ourselves? And I'm sharing all of this so that you can be aware of what is actually going on presently. Tech is getting smaller, cheaper and easier. Now the question is people are saying, oh, drones are expensive. Yeah, that is true. This drone. Um, it's now it's not in production again. So don't let me use it as, as an example. But when it came out, it was around 1,500, um, 1,500 USD. Convert that into your currency, wherever you have, you know. <clears throat> and um, now we now have drones of, of $300. Drones of $300. And they, they're actually doing what this guy is doing. Yes. You know, uh, $300, convert $300, you know, to your currency. And it's actually getting smaller. And the, one of the way I use, um, one of the ways I illustrate how this thing is getting interesting is that uh, 10 years ago, I mean, we are now in 2023, okay? 10 years ago, how do you imagine we buy this? Um, how much do you imagine buying this phone, a smartphone? It's, it's for some class of people, of course, you know, but now we now have, phones all around, you know, with few dollars, with few Naira, with few cities, or, you know, you can be able to have a technology, smartphone like this, you know, smartphones, you know, on, uh, with you, and you can be able to, um, you know, access the internet, do I some, some, some access some mobile applications and all that. So, uh, the tech is getting smaller. And as it gets smaller, it's also getting cheaper. That's my point. Okay. I see a world where drone technology will be cheap. I mean, will be cheaper. Let me say cheaper than what it is right now. And it is actually getting cheaper day by day, just like phone tech, um, smartphone technology actually went all around. Um, all around. So this drone is actually the Mavic, uh, multi, uh, Mavic 3 multispectral. This is actually the newest multispectral drone in town, portable. Earlier, the, the other drones that we have for multispectral, they are big and bulky uh, that, um, you know, you will know that you are carrying something. But now look at what we have. And you'll be collecting data in different spectrum of light, remote sensing, 
and all that are actually available for you to 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 engage all right um this is the next we now have an eye computing power let me shock you the phones that you use now are more than 100 times uh, did i say 100 times <laughs> a thousand times more powerful than the first electronic that was used to commission um men exploring the moon i mean the rocket right it's actually more powerful it was actually 5nd electronic that actually powered uh the mission to the moon I need, I probably I need to repeat that. It was just 5M electronic device or computer device that actually powered the mission to the moon. So imagine, and I am using, this is 6, 6 gig. This phone is actually 6 gig in terms of power, in terms of processing power, or you call it um, uh, RAM, you know. So, and different uh, stuff like, like that. So we, we now have, High computing power uh, that as the, as the tech is getting smaller, they are not getting weaker, they are getting more powerful. And look at the picture I have there monitors. For you to actually have this real time, you need the real time data on the field. Probably you are using a combine uh, or a tractor. And this is, this is going to be common. Guys, I want you to actually be alert. If you think this is actually limited to the West, or you are actually, <laughs> you are actually on the long term because this is, this will be, this, this, this is getting. The, um, it's been mass, mass produced right now, and we're going to see a lot of uh, this technology around uh, around uh, the country, so uh, or around you in agriculture. So get ready. So high computing power is actually the potential you should look at, uh, should look for, and look at. And um, now this is it. This is actually something you also need to also look at from the perspective of the demand and the supply. Demand in the sense that uh, who are going to use these technologies, uh, these digital revolutions that we're talking about, who are going to be using these technologies. Uh, and that's actually from the youth population. Who are going to be creating or applying these technologies are actually the youthful population. So these are actually our leverage. And more importantly, I need to actually reveal this to you. We Africans, we, we, we have a huge population uh, that, that I believe that if we can be able to leverage, we can take over the world. Uh, we, can, we can actually recover, we can actually move from whatever uh, level of agriculture that we are practicing to a modern agriculture or more modern agriculture uh, and transforming our food security and all that. So yeah, I'm actually an example. Yeah, the flying farmer. Uh, we are actually uh, using technology, like drone technology and all that, uh, more particularly drone technology because I have affinity for this technology. So the, the question you want to ask is, um, how do you then be positioned uh, in the future of work? How do you then uh, remain relevant and grow your skill? Um, to be relevant to the future of work. Number one is actually capacity building. You have to, you have to uh, be ready to actually build capacity. Uh, it's not gonna be easy, I must tell you, and this is why we are here. We show feed academy. So this is actually uh, an initiative ready to actually build the capacity of youth to lead position, uh, with patient agriculture and also the more relevant to the future of work and technology and agriculture. This is actually why we are here, okay? Uh, how uh, you for you to actually remain relevant i mean and also um leveraging on all the potentials and opportunities to which i have shared um and lot more there are more but these are actually something prominent i need to share with you uh you need um knowledge i mean knowledge building knowledge uh, knowledge knowledge is very very key um in terms of skill and also remain uh being aware you know awareness is actually key awareness is actually key that's actually the for somebody has to how do I get started? Um, you know, building my skills, or I'm just an agronomist and talking about artificial intelligence and agriculture, and, I'm, and people are now beginning to use smartphone, and smartphone is telling them which disease that they are using, what mechanism is actually 
delivering that. Um, that is actually computer vision, by the way. Uh, remote sensing technologies and all that, you know, all of these are, are actually uh, what uh, people are asking. But I think the first thing you need to do, you should be aware and you actually must be ready for capacity building. And I know that some of you are already um, enjoying the opportunities around capacity building that we have been bringing to you. Uh, the the IUT Coursera uh, platform uh, that uh, that we onboarded some students on um, more than more than two hundred students on uh, to learn about GIS fundamentals of GIS because that's actually another technology that is actually changing the the game. Um, we need that. That's the point. So and this is actually why the Show Feed Academy is all here for you. Now, as I round up, so for I, I would. I would have questions, please, after this. Um, my, now, the point, the point that I'm trying to make from this uh, lectures, webinar, whatever you call it, is I want you to choose if you're going to be a player. You're going to be an, uh, an enabler, or perhaps you want to be an observer. I would actually tell you to actually be a player. And this is why we are here. This is why you need to be, remain aware about what's actually the latest technology. How can I actually leverage this technology? How can I apply this technology in 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 what I do? And I'm 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 so pleased that a lot of youths on our platform are actually learning about this technology um, on mobile 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 <clears throat> mobile software development or software development generally. You know, and these are actually tools. You know, um, technology is a tool, and I need to reiterate that. But when you actually understand how this technology works. How you can actually do them. You can actually be able to innovate to solve our problems or problems that are specific to your um to your region. You know, um, talk about problem of on primary problems such as um seed, um, uh, um, um plant population issues, pest issues, diseases issues, uh, supply chain issues, uh, financial issues. We actually need technology to actually drive them. So you need to be a player. I would encourage you to be a player. Do not be an observer, all right? So, and this is actually what we are doing at the Shelfield Academy to actually raise more players uh, and, and enablers, not just observers, those who are actually going around and looking around uh, what, is, what is now next or uh, when is the next iPhone is going to come out? When is the next technology going to come out? The point is, what are you doing with the technology that you have? What influence are you actually exerting? How are you applying it? Or perhaps, how are you creating new technologies, inventing for yourself? Yeah, we cannot stay, sit down and become a consumer nation, you know, um, all, 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 all over. But we can actually uh, now begin to develop our own technology, apply technology to our own context, and um, um, we can be able to uh, rise above the challenge of the 21st century, and we can be able to deliver on food security and sustainability and so, and also make profits. That is actually key. We need to actually make money. We need to actually build, we need to actually build a notable and a noble career uh, in our field. So thank you very much, guys. So if you have questions, I am actually ready to answer you. Oh, this is actually pro, it's not air. Um, David. I think you. This is actually pro. Look at uh, this the the camera. The Mavic Air does not have a camera like that. They are all Mavic, so uh, they look they look alike, you know. So yeah. Do you have questions? Please unmute yourself. Ask questions. This is actually the time for us to engage. Uh, things that I did not actually share, I can be able to share them with you now. You know. Yeah. Let's go. You're right on, sir. Give All right, a... please. I want you to introduce yourself, your name, uh, any other thing you want us to know your interest and your question or your comment. Thank you. All right. Good evening, sir. I don't know if you can hear me. Good evening. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yes. Oh, that's, that's great. Physician. Thanks, Chief, um, for the um, wonderful webinar section. Uh, my question um, is in relating to that. Your, your, name, your name, please. Your name, your name. My name is, okay, my name is Akewe Dolu Okay, Kayode, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I, I own an academy where I train students um, 
on research and data analytics. That's what mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Uh, I studied I studied agricultural economics. Nice. Yeah, so um, I want to um, know how data can mm -hmm. come in into digital agriculture. Okay. Because I've been I've attended some webinars and I've not really know how we can get data. If you understand it, how we can get data from the farms when we get this data, where the data will be stored, and where um, we're going to make decisions pertaining to um, what's it called. So um, um, we're going to make um, where uh, we're going to make decisions where farmers can make to make decisions to improve on the profitability and all that. So how can this data be gotten from how? Where? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah. The hour and where. So hour and where. To, yeah, we are looking to the future of farming. Understand? Like me, now that I studied agricultural economics, I think it should be in my own position to you know to you know according in my field of study, you know, to get data, analyze this data. You understand? So we have different softwares now. We have programming. We have mm -hmm. like on Power BI, uh, Excel. You, you get so how can we get this data? Uh, data and you know. How and where? <laughs> let me just put it that. Thank you very much. Okay, so so let me just expand your question. Now, not just to say how and where. Uh, there's this um, uh, five wives and uh, one husband. I mean, let's let's expand it. I mean, the why the W's, the words, the why, the where. Um, what else? Why and and okay, yeah. But I think that's an interesting question. Um, Hello, somebody, somebody is actually on. Um, uh, okay, thank you. So, uh, talking about data, you know, the, when we use the word data, data is actually an ambiguous word. Because we have a lot of data. I mean, in terms of classes, what kind of data are we talking about? Yeah. Okay, so what in relation to agriculture and somebody who actually have um, an agricultural knowledge, uh, being an agricultural economist yourself, and you also own an academy that, or perhaps a training center that also brings people around. Uh, I didn't understand, or oh, probably I didn't get what you said you, you train people, on, but I guess it's around data analytics and the likes or analysis. So data is actually when we use the word data, it's actually an ambiguous word because. Uh, what data are we talking about? So it is what data that we lead to where, you know, what are we looking for, um, which we then lead to where we should look for it. So we, are, we have a lot of data, which I believe we know about. Um, and I'm not trying to classify data or to nominal, blah, blah, blah. What I'm just saying in real sense is that data can just be many things, can be numbers, can be pictures, images, can be, um, can be graphs, can, no, sorry, can be, can be a lot of things, can be, voice you know data can be voice data can be um uh, um what do you call this again tests okay it can be tests you know it can just be tests uh just you have on the screen uh, you know data can be many things you know so now where can we in relation to agriculture so now that we know what these data are i mean different kinds of data um how can i uh say uh okay let's let me use this more related one for me pictures when i take or with your phone when you take this with, this, with the camera of your phone you are you, you, when you take a picture it's actually data that's actually a graphical data or an image you know a drone will also take image uh either uh, uh narrow bands like um arrow i mean red blue or 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 at um uh, near infrared or the visible um, uh, images like your how GB images that that we are seeing ourselves with now you know so those are data how can you then process that data okay for example look at this look at this uh, screen what I'm sharing on the screen uh, there's a test how can I perhaps you as a data analyst um, you know we now have artificial intelligence that can be able to interpret this into your local language it's probably in Chinese or probably in in Yoruba or probably in Aousa language, you know, that's a data, you know, and it is then left to you what you want to do with the data. The image that I collect for my drones, okay, I can actually use it to map the farm. So if you are in Kapasha or you are in the US and you are farming or you are investing in Nigeria, me giving you a map, I would have to first go there and collect data. What data am I collecting? The images of the field, 
and then I stitch it up together with photogrammetry uh, software that then makes, uh, I mean, make all of the images I collected, you know, turn them into a map that makes sense to you. You can be able to say, oh, there is actually stream here. There's actually, you can be able to do some planning. That to you is a data. You know, data is actually ambiguous, you know, depending on who is actually seeing the data uh, or which kind of data you have and who you have, you know. So um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but I think I have. <laughs> but so it, 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 data, this, this idea of data, it's all caught across, uh, depending on what you are seeing. It can be data in numbers. Okay, what data around your farm records, um, what input you are using. You know, it could be data around um, um, the color of your of, of the chemical, okay, or the color of the, of the fruits, okay, or the color of at harvest. You know, these are data that helps you to take informed decisions. So, like, oh, when I see this, that's a data. So you turn it, process it into an information that helps you take uh, informed decision. So, Kyle, um, uh, please unmute. Let's let's engage. Am I actually answering your question? Because this data are actually everywhere. Uh, like you mentioned, they are actually everywhere on the field in terms of the farm record, either it's a number, either it is actually images, uh, either it is whatever. You know, data is, when we use the word data, it's actually ambiguous. I used to say it, but it's because it's actually diverse or we have variable data. The data that the sensor will be collecting, the soil sensor will be collecting, you know, it's different from the data that the drone will be collecting. We cannot actually, they are not the same. But they are hot data. The, the, the soil sensor perhaps is taking soil moisture, you know, actually uh, sensing soil moisture. So it's actually doing the soil moisture, probably reporting it in percentage, probably reporting it in feed capacity, in metric, uh, it has, or, you know, and sensor is um, the drone up there using multispectral, like I showed you. The part, perhaps you are flying the Mavic 3 multispectral. You are actually collecting data in different bands and in, in, the, in the spectrum of light. You know, that's actually a data. And what I do with that data is then left to me based on my understanding, based on what I'm seeing, based on what I want to solve, based on the problem I want to solve and the solution I want to prefer to it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you answered my question um, um, very well. But okay, what of if we are relating collection of data, making use of drones, and you also uh, make um, mention on um, satellites? So that is where I, want, I really want to get my, the understanding from. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that. I think you have actually helped me, uh, and I was actually talking about that. So you must be specific when we talk about data. Okay, so uh, now that you talked about drone data, there are a lot of even with drones uh, because drones are for actually unmanned aerial vehicles, and like I say, from my own perspective, from the agricultural application perspective, drones are only vehicles that carries um, a sensor or a payload. You know, so and the sensor of the payload or the payload that it carries determines the functionality of the drone. For this drone, as small as it is, this is actually the payload, this camera. This is the functionality of this camera. It's not, I'm not flying the drone so that because I want to see something flying, it's not a toy for me. This is actually doing the work I need to do. This camera that you're seeing here. Okay, so now what data is this camera collecting? Images. Okay, so this image, then, okay, are you going to take it? Um, it's not left to you, you know. As the analyst, uh, uh, data analyst or science uh, the anal uh, analyst or scientist to say, okay, with these images I've been able to collect from this drone, with this RGB, this drone is actually fitted with RGB camera. Okay, what do I want to see? Oh, I can see that there are weights here. Can I use computer vision to be able to recognize this, even without me going to the field? Because now I've collected data, I can be able to count the number of weeds. I can be able to count. I uh, know I can be able to estimate in terms of percentage the level of infestation of weeds in the field. I can be able to know where these weeds are because I've actually collected my data on, already on the field. I can be able to send the drone down to different points on the field to say, okay, I have been able to look at satellite imagery and I can be able to have the map, okay, from remote sensing. I can see that field A is actually not doing well. And I want to confirm, I can use my drone, send the drone down there and confirm what the satellite imagery is seeing, giving me a more closer and a higher resolution um, image or data compared to what I can see from the satellite, you know, and I can take action based on what I see. Either from the data, I can process it or I can just have key. Whatever you want to do with the data is actually left to you. But for what I can mention, I can, I can tell you that you can scout for weed, you can scout for pests, you can actually scout for, uh, uh, um, 
nutrient deficiency, you know, and we can be able to, with different uh, with artificial intelligence that we have now, we can be able to now analyze it. And from your own experience as the expert, you know, you can also be able to process and say, ah, because I can see this from this image, I need to actually do this. Does that make sense? Wow, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay. That's great. Okay, okay. Are you on the PFA group? What do you say? Are you on the Prison, um, Prison Feed Academy group on WhatsApp? Yes, I, I was just sending mail this afternoon pertaining to the training that will be coming on. Uh, but I got this information from TG Ahen. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm okay. not on the Physician Academy um, group chat. If you can send oh. me the link, I will appreciate it. Okay. okay, okay. Um, if um my community manager is here, please drop the link to the group on the chat box so that uh, we can join. And I mean so that we can be able to engage better. Hmm? Uh, we like to, these are the things we we, we we like to talk about on this group. Thank you. So um Thank you. Moses, uh please go ahead with your question. Good evening, sir. Thank you very evening, much sir. for the opportunity, sir. Thank I'm really you, grateful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a 400 level student in right. engineering, and I got a big interest really in um, agriculture 4.0. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I work with, um, I'm good at Arduino and program microcontrollers. Nice, nice. So okay, okay. But um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I wanted to ask if I could do my, because I'm very, very intrigued and very fascinated. So I wanted to ask if I could do my um, IT with you people there, sir. At In Christian, where? Christian Academy. At okay, Christian okay, Academy. okay, okay. Your IT. Um, that this yeah. is actually a more personal question. I cannot answer here. So, um, if you have my mail, um, you can send a mail. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. let me just a mail, or perhaps if you are on the Christian Field Academy group, you should be able okay. to have uh the contacts to reach out to reach out to any of the admin um and uh, we will get you sorted um and trying to okay, so no problem, sir. yeah you're most welcome okay thank you so much Shagun. you can actually put down your hands and uh, let me have the next person please please yeah 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 you're raising your hand uh and that uh um Annie Aniset. Yeah, Aniset. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you for Mr. Thank you, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, you're most uh, welcome. Okay. So I'm sorry for my English. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Anise you are here. From, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm from Cote d'Ivoire and thank you for your presentation too. Okay. Uh, my question is about uh data collect again, and it is about uh, I want to say the way, the best way I want to, to know if you want the tools I can use for drone data collect. If I want to make auto photography, or I want to learn that kind of science, and I want to know how to, how can I proceed? I want your tips like an expert to, yeah, to get the way to do that. Okay, uh, you mean a way to actually process data, just yeah. data? Or yeah, yeah, collect data okay. with drone okay. software. I can use to do that. And uh, I want to say to after collecting the drone, the mission after the mission, how can I make uh, an auto photo and mm. use it for remote sensing and okay. something okay. like this? Okay, mm. okay, okay, okay. Nice, nice question. Nice question. You are actually mm. taking us somewhere mm. somewhere more advanced mm. than this uh, webinar. Uh, this webinar, but I will just give you some mm. tips because uh, okay. we have okay. webinars already. Uh, and mm -hmm. courses uh, that we are actually preparing on this, and we have mm -hmm. always been sharing also too. Um, okay, so now um, collecting data which are done. I mean, data we are talking about here, images, and then we want to actually make a map of it. Um, we've collected thousands or hundreds of images. We want to stitch them all together. Um, that's true photogrammetry software. And, and I'm not trying to promote any software here. There are a lot of them um, online, drone deploy, Artishops, um, Metashape, um, Pix4D, Mapper, Pix4D field, um, Solvi, 
um, UGS, uh, UGS, UGSC, uh, or, you know, there are a lot of them. I must, I cannot actually exhaust them. So there are a lot of photograms. Just the, the point is for you to actually uh, stitch your June images together. Is just get the word photogrammetry software. Okay. Photogrammetry software. But so, it, you know, is there some free, I want to say some open source software. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are, uh, like uh, open, open drone, open drone, open drone map. Yeah. O open drone map. Yes. O D O D. Oh. Yeah. Open drone map. Oh, okay. Um, you can also use yes yeah, this commercial software like drone deploy for the day. They can mm -hmm. give you two weeks, two weeks. Um, um, like a, a a period to be able to test, you know, to test, test the application. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. yeah, although they, they have limits uh -huh. and and things like that. So if, mm -hmm. you know they are actually there for the for the money. So they are just want they just want to do that too. But you can test that out. You know, um, mm -hmm. there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. Just just check online and these that I've mentioned would also help you. So mm -hmm. going forward from processing from photogrammetry, then what do you do with the maps? You know, there are also applications that. Act, that are actually embedded artificial intelligence into them that can help you do uh, plant counting. Maybe you have cocoa plantation. I hope that we start a project soon uh, with Sifan. Mm -hmm. And cocoa plantation, you can be able to count mm -hmm. the numbers of cocoa that are there. That is true artificial intelligence or more specifically mm -hmm. computer vision. You know, so there are platforms that could also help you, like Solvi, like. Um, um, yeah, at last, like um, you can also mm -hmm. develop that yourself through Python. You know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you can actually do that uh, with your auto auto mosaic maps or perhaps individual photos that you have. So you can actually do that. But trust me, guys, mm -hmm. we are actually coming with courses and knowledge sharing sections that experts would actually be uh, be introducing us. It's going to be a workshop, okay, and. Mm -hmm. Look forward to, uh, we look forward to working with you beyond this online engagement. You know, we are actually real, so we want to come to you. Um, so universities, uh, we we are actually pushing forward to universities, reaching more youth and more young minds about the latest technologies in agriculture. More particularly, agricultural students are more particularly enthusiasts uh, in the field. So, do we have any other question? Um, it's getting more interesting. Somebody asked oh, okay. me oh, actually good question to be about what we did, what we talked about today, please. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I want to know another thing. Are uh, the pictures taken by drone uh, already auto referenced or? Come again. I want to know if the picture, when you take some pictures with drone, if we, you already have uh, the referencing of, the, of that pictures, Okay, yeah. Um, you 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 just need to be mindful of the drone that you use, not a toy drone. Mm. Many drones can oh, take okay. pictures, but not many drones can actually give you the coordinate referencing. I guess that's what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. yeah, you need to actually get a professional drone to um I mean or a a good drone. Let me use the word good drone for you to actually have images that are actually georeferenced, which will be used for your maps. And um, mm -hmm. and all other geographical geospatial works. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, also mentioning GIS, you can actually import your drone data or to mosaic into GIS platform and do a lot more work on elevation mm -hmm. analysis, watershed analysis, slope, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and all that. If you know what I'm talking about. So, and I hope you guys are enjoying the the mm -hmm. GIS course on Coursera that is that we have uh, facilitated, which is free um, to mm -hmm. learn. Yeah. So. Do you have more questions before we oh, call okay. it the day? Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah. You're most welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. Do we have, I mean, guys, I, I guess I have not actually answered all your questions uh, or your your queries. Ask them now before, before we end the, uh, the class or the webinar, rather. Well, why don't, Okay, so what's your name? Hello. No. Okay, stick is I'm still the one Kyle on the call. Okay, Kyle. Yeah, please. Um, I came online late, so um, number one, I don't know what um um, physician academic do. Okay. Get. I don't know what they do. I think the, my first interaction with them was that I got a meet from them, 
um, linking me up with IT that um, I should take a course. So I don't know what physician academy do. So since then I've been looking up what to, what's this academy all about? Um, I think I, I need to know that, thank you. Okay, so first, why you got a uh, recommendation from, from us uh, is that you showed interest. You showed interest in Agriculture 4.0 webinar, the first one. So what we did from our database, because that's actually, an, um, well, we, we looked uh, within our database and we were able to screen and good for you that you actually fall under those who were selected uh, to be recommended for the GIS course. So now, uh, talking about Precision Feed Academy. So Precision Feed Academy is that organization, okay, educational organization that is actually positioned to educate, train, uh, build the capacity, guide and mentor, okay, young professionals on modern technologies, okay, for or in agriculture, um, so that we can be able to um, lead with precision agriculture, which is actually the future of farming, precision agriculture, and for them also to remain relevant in the future of work and technologies that, that is actually in the agricultural industrial ecosystem. So that is actually what we stand for. And um, they're working with young professionals, like I mentioned to you, and um, technologies such as drone technology, um, GIS and remote sensing, IoT and other smart technology, artificial intelligence and data science in agriculture, or perhaps we call it data-driven agronomy. And all of these things are actually more focused on primary production, okay? We are not too much perhaps in the future as we evolve, uh, but we are actually focused on primary production. How can we uh, develop the capacity of youth and all of this technology for us to be able to have solutions to our problems, uh, more particularly in Africa. You know, and we're not actually streamlined to Africa, but that's actually the focus, you know, uh, so that we have the youthful population, so that we can be able to leverage on this youthful population, give them the new skill and introduce them to the new revolution of agri or in agriculture and how we ourselves can be able to influence this revolution. We are not waiting and sitting until they produce something for us to use. But we ourselves, we are actually inventing the way. We are actually improvising. We are actually turning around and changing things in the agricultural industry. So you can just say that, um, okay, now uh, we also say, uh, you can just say that this is actually a place you can build a tech career in the field of agriculture. So we are actually changing the narrative about bringing digital technologies to young minds so that they can be able to see agriculture in a different light and engage with agriculture in a different light, different from O oh, and cutlass, crude way, uh, drudgery, um, um, and poverty stricken agriculture, but into agriculture that is actually business minded, technology driven, um, and farmers that are digital savvy, those, these are actually uh, what um, we are all about, okay? So uh, we, we do say that this is actually your last bus stop to begin a tech career in the field of agriculture. So I hope I'm able to answer your question. So in the coming year, I mean, that's 2023, uh, beyond webinar, we're gonna be having a uh, lot more webinars from international organization, uh, international organization or representatives and facilitators from the US, from the Europe, um, um, Brazil, uh, and a lot more, you know, on all of these technologies, okay? And we are also creating courses and facilitating. We are not only creating courses, okay? We are also facilitating you to, um, to platforms that allows you to be able to grow your capacity in this technology in relation to agriculture, okay? How can you use artificial intelligence in agriculture, data science in agriculture, IoT for agriculture? These are actually, you know, broad technologies, but our focus is only on agriculture. How can you develop products for agriculture, tech products for agriculture. How can you actually develop adware for agriculture? How can you actually apply this adware in agriculture? You know, so that is actually all that we stand um, to deliver. I hope that is clear, Kayobe. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. It's a very good platform to build capacity. Thank you. Okay, and um, we're looking forward to engaging with you, engaging with what you do, and um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to work with you. If you uh, have projects, if you have uh, 
ideas that you'd like us to implement. If you have um, your schools, we by next year we'll be having, we'll be rolling out a um, lot of our um, our plans, student ambassadorship, uh, you know, engaging students in universities more particularly because we believe that is there. We have our target audience, most especially beyond the, this online stuff. So yeah, look forward to what we're doing and we look forward to also engaging more of you guys. So do we ask, still have any other question? Thank you so much guys for joining in. Uh, it's been a fantastic time since 5 p.m. Uh, GMT plus one, you know. Uh, so thank you so much. Do we, ask, do we have any other question before we wrap up today? I am willing to actually answer your question. Somebody asked me a question. Ask me a question about. <sighs> okay, I guess I guess uh, we can begin to call it a day. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for staying with uh, to this time. Uh, we are really honored to have you, and we also want to thank our supporters, Tag Ng. Um, they actually gave us the this platform to use. Um, their partners. We also want to thank Ticketed Air Precision, a sister company to Precision Feed Academy. We're all about precision agriculture. We are all about uh, the future of farming and bringing it, not, not for us to project it into the future, but bringing it closer to us and playing, I mean, um, actually delivering it uh, like we yeah. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate the time. And if you have questions, further questions, please send it to our mail. Join the WhatsApp group. And um, let's continue the conversation. Be free. Um, let's continue the conversation. Let's help you. Let's guide you. Let's work together. Thank you so much. And have a good evening from you. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.